and welcome to this week's edition of the Twin Spires Jury. A little bit of a different look this week. Uh, Ashley is up at uh, Woodbine on assignment for the King's Plate, uh, and uh, James also on assignment as well. I was about to make mention that uh, Brownie's got the best backdrop out of everybody since we started, but uh, as soon as we came on, the backdrop went away. So uh, I guess we'll have to vamp a little bit here. Uh, Nick, how's everything going on your side of the world? Doing great. You know, Brownie did this to me once before we were doing a show and his uh, Delmar Wi-Fi was just not up to snuff. But if everybody stuck with you and I, that's a fate, uh, fate we wouldn't wish on anybody. That's a valid point for sure. Well, we're going to start with you anyway. Uh, so hopefully we can get Brownie up and running here quickly. Uh, it's going to be a fun jury as long as Brownie can get in because we've got a lot of head to head stuff going on in our best bets and fades. And that starts uh, in a race that you and I both have strong opinions, but a little bit of a differing viewpoint. So, Nick, why don't you kick us off with your best bet? Yeah, so mine is going to be Mondego on Saturday. This is an early, uh, early in the card race. Um, it's going to go as race number. He's horse number eight. It's race number seven on Saturday afternoon. And you know, my angle with Mondego, Darren, is that this horse is going to be forwardly placed. He should be on the lead. He's been successful when he's shown speed in the past. And last time out, he showed speed going 11 furlongs. That was a race ultimately won by Battle of Normandy, who came from somewhat deep in the pack. I like these speed cutbacks in this scenario, three turn to two turn, Rosario on board. I've never been the biggest fan of betting speed horses on the Melon Turf course. I'd much rather have them on the inner. But this is a situation where he is just completely loose on paper, in my opinion. There is nobody in here that's going to keep him honest. I hope that Joel is uh, is willing to take advantage of that. You know, sometimes trainers and jockeys overthink scenarios where horses show speed and they're unsuccessful as far as whether to do it again in the future. But this is a situation where he is just supposed to go. And if he does, I'm hoping he establishes is the running and i think we'll get every bit of that five to one morning line it's a super competitive race and one where uh where i'm happy to back one that'll have what i think will be a pretty clear pace advantage yeah i mean joel rosario one of the best in the business and certainly one of the ones that you want in a situation where uh he has a chance to be on a philly or excuse me a gelding in this case that's loose on the lead uh, in the form of mondego but uh, yeah, I, I look, uh, I'll get to Andrew's uh, best bet in uh, in a minute because he is still not returning. So we'll stick in this race for myself and we'll kind of, oh, there he is. Andrew's back. Andrew's back. There you go. That's that picturesque backdrop that I was talking about. But just putting a bow on uh, what we were talking about, Nick, with Mondego, uh, Christoph Clement actually had a two-year-old Philly air sprinting on the turf in wire-to-wire -wire fashion uh, just yesterday that looked absolutely spectacular. So Rosario going to look to do similar here with Mondego. We'll get to my best bet momentarily. Since we have Andrew, we'll send it on over to him for his. Yeah, thanks, DZ. A couple of uh, technical difficulties there, but great to be joining you from where uh, the turf meets the surf. Honored to be making my jury debut, actually, gentlemen. I got called up for, um, for real jury duty a few months ago, but was disqualified before I even made it to the starting gate for being an international shipper. So it's, uh, it's nice to be able to qualify for, for this jury. Uh, and uh, Blaze and Lance have, have given me my riding instructions, so I'm pretty good to go. Uh, my best bet coming up in the Grade 1 Delmar Oaks here on Saturday. It looks a, a fantastic race. I'm excited to see Phil Bowers boot you back in California after last seeing him here at the Breeders' Cup uh, back at Santa Anita in November. I think Peter Erton has a good chance with Maduro, but they've all got to beat my best bet, Ice Cream, You Scream, for leading trainer Phil D'Amato and with Hector Berrios in the irons. Here's why I think she'll win and keep her undefeated record intact. She's drawn post position one. There doesn't seem to be a lot of speed around her. I think she leads for fun and dictates this race, just like she did in the grade two San Clemente here on opening day. We've seen from the first four weeks here at Del Mar that you want to be forwardly placed on, on both courses. And speaking of the San Clemente, a lot of horses she beat on that day line up and take her on again as well. Perhaps I could make a case for Medora on that day. She was caught a little bit wide, but really, until they beat her, she's my top selection. She's now third off the layoff. She's rock hard fit. I know the stable is very high on her. We know new part owners, Agave Racing, are particularly high on her. Little Red Feather just sold a 33% share of her at the Fasig Tipton flash sale a couple of uh, weeks ago for the grand sum of $330,000. So that makes her a million dollar filly. I think she'll be worth a lot more than that after Saturday when she wins the Del Mar Oaks. So my best bet, ice cream. You scream, we all scream when our best bet on the jury gets up. 
Well, uh, we'll have some more to scream about uh, because I know Nick has a few <laughs> thoughts on this race. And uh, I'll uh, talk about this race as part of my what else. But we'll circle back to my best bet for the time being, which actually comes in the same race as Nick's. And, and I got creative here. This is that seventh race allowance again at Saratoga going to mile and three sixteenths. Uh, I think Mendelssohn's March is just really interesting in this race, making a second race back off the layoff. He's coming out of a race where he actually earned a really sharp Ragazin figure that would make him one of the major players in the field. Uh, he's got some previous races against company that I think does stand out. Obviously, they tried to get this horse on the Derby Trail by running him in the bluegrass. He ran behind Web Slinger in the American Turf. Then he got pretty good in the Audubon behind Web Slinger once again when he was bet down to four to one. He's had some tough fields in the Belmont Derby. He was fourth in the Saranac behind three next out winners, including the very talented Carl Spackler. And his last race, I just thought he didn't get out of the gate well enough. He was far back from post 12 uh, in a spot that was just impossible in his first start off the layoff. And he was only beaten three and a half lanes. I think that we will absolutely see a move forward here. I just have to hope that Julian Leperu can kind of navigate some traffic here. But the price is going to be right. And he could be a bit of a separator in the multi race exotics if he can find a way through. So big price. Mendelssohn's March 15 to 1. We're getting awfully daring with our best bet here in the seventh race. Uh, at Saratoga. But uh, in addition to the best bets, you know that we do our fades. So this gives uh, Nick an opportunity to take the counterpoint to what uh, Andrew Brown had to say about the Del Mar Oaks. Yeah, of course, the challenge of uh, figuring out what other price is going to be. And I had a couple of horses that I was thinking about, but my fade is ice cream, you scream. We did this last week with James and Ashley and Ashley's uh, fade was James's best bet. So uh, it ends up being a lot of fun. So my, my issue with Ice Cream, You Scream, who is one of the better named fillies that we have and better named horses, period, in racing right now, I'm not big on her going the mile and an eighth. And really my angle on it is something that you're going to talk a little bit about later on, Darren, which is that I think the West Coast fillies just don't hold up when they face the East Coast horses. And we've seen East Coast-based horses run well in this particular race over the years. It's a race that Chad Brown has taken advantage of. He won it with Cambier Park five years ago. Last year, Be Your Best went out West and finished a good second behind Anazette. Anazette is probably a little better than the average West Coast turf filly that we've seen. I'm not big on ice cream, you scream at a mile and an eighth. And I think she's got a big problem with the filly drawn a couple of stalls to the outside from the Barnavarno Delacour, who I think is going to put a lot of pressure on her right from the start. And really, to me, looks like the horse that I want to bet in there. I'm interested to see where we end up price-wise on those two. That's Whiskey Decision, who's breaking from the three. She really improved last time out in a turf stake at Delaware that we've seen trainers use over the years to pin, uh, to I should say, spring forward horses that end up doing well in the second half of the year. So I'm going to go against the home team. I'm going to choose one of the East Coast shippers, but I'm going to fade ice cream, you scream at what should be, I would guess, post-time favorite odds when all is said and done. We don't have the morning line yet, but I would imagine she'll, uh, she'll be in the neighborhood of two to one or less. Head-to-head -head matchup between Brownie and Nick. Um, maybe we can get a little side action uh, when we go off the air and see how it shakes out. But uh, it will certainly be an interesting race for us to watch and definitely one uh, worthwhile uh, from a betting standpoint as well. I, again, I'll have some more thoughts on this when I get to my what else topic. Brownie, how about yourself? Where are you fading? DZ, the feature race here on Friday at Del Mar is the CTT and TOC Stakes, which uh, – speaks to the, the cooperation between two of California's um, leading racing organizations here, the California Thoroughbred Trainers and the Thoroughbred Owners of California. I'm fading Linda's gift here, who is likely to be odds on, and deservingly so. She's won four of her last five, all over the marathon distance. Uh, she's won twice at Del Mar. She's impeccably bred. What I don't like about her is when she's been more than two months between runs. She tends to be at her best with smaller spacing. Yes, she's had three breezes at Del Mar leading into this, but you know, she's now going th uh, 11 furlongs uh, ahead of her instead of six. Um, her jockey hasn't been in the greatest form. Three wins from 45 rides for this meet. Trainer as well, two for 16. And you've also got a couple of wild cards in this race. Um, Zamato has the, the Brazilian grade one winner um, who shook off the rust with one Del Mar start, Son of Hill. Plus a couple of nice Irish breads in this race, Sunset Glory and Duvet Day who I think also both look to be sitting on uh, a pretty big race. So going to take on uh, Linda's Gift in the CTT and TOC stakes here on Friday afternoon at Del Mar. Yeah, like and appreciate the uh, the brazen uh, fate on a horse that's going to be uh, what I expect to be a pretty short price. 
Uh, I'm going to fade a horse that I think is also going to be a short price. And it's actually uh, the race after the one that Nick and I discussed. It's the eighth race allowance on Saratoga on Saturday, uh, an entry level event going a mile and an eighth. I don't like time out here, guys, uh, from post position number 10. Um, finished third in the Curlin Stakes behind Unmatched Wisdom in his most recent start. Unmatched Wisdom is headed towards the Travers as an unbeaten three for three Chad Brown horse, um, who didn't really visually impress me nearly as, as much as he did in his first two starts uh, when he did win the Curlin, uh, when it was uh, almost all out to get that uh, mile and an eighth distance. Time out at the mile and eighth. He does have a win, but the post does concern me here, guys. Um, there is some speed signed on to his inside, so I'm a little bit worried about him getting a wide trip in this spot. And I just think that there's a, a couple other talented runners in here. Uh, Bank Frenzy's coming off of a blowout victory against New York Bread Company. I thought Rocketeer ran extremely well when uh, pushing the pace and the tempo, going a mile and an eighth in his most recent try. Uh, and you have Donegal Surges, who was second as an older horse, uh, in the uh, commentator most recently behind the talented Drake's passage. So I just think there's other options in here. It's a three-year-old uh, facing older in a tougher allowance event. He's going to have to prove it to me at, at a short price. Nick, I know you look at Saratoga. Not sure if you have a, a view on uh, timeout. Yeah, you know, look, I agree with a lot of the sentiment you shared about the Curlin. And, you know, I think one of the things that you kind of alluded to as well was that as much as you might feel unmatched wisdom didn't run really all that great, which he really didn't given the expectation going into there. He's the horse you want out of it because he did all the running early timeout kind of just sucked along and, and got up for third. I don't like the 10 post going a mile and an eighth. I do think he's a horse with some ability and some upside given that he's lightly raced up to this point, but I don't blame you at all. He was on my short list of potential fades for this particular scenario because uh, he's no great shakes as a pretty heavy favorite. Yep. Yeah, we are definitely uh, in agreement on that. We do have some great shakes, though, this weekend at Twin Spires, and we'll take a look at what we have from a promotional standpoint. And the first thing we have to mention is the Twin Spires tournaments, as we have now been underway for the better part of two and a half weeks. And we've got a series of tournaments this weekend uh, featuring Woodbine and Ellis Park, guys. On uh, Friday at Woodbine, we have a $100 Woodbine Challenge that kind of gets you ready for the big day on Saturday, which features a $5,000 guaranteed cash tournament uh, for the King's Plate Challenge, a $200 tournament, $150 to your bankroll, $50 to the prize pool. So again, we're guaranteeing that prize pool to be at $5,000 for an outstanding card of racing up at Woodbine. And we certainly will have Twin Spires coverage there with a lot of our uh, social media and content, video content team up there for the weekend. And then on Monday, we have a $100 Ellis Park Challenge as well to kick off our cash tournaments for next week. So go to Twin Spires Tournaments. You can start to register for some of those contests and learn all about them as well. And then from the uh, promotion standpoint, we are continuing the Summer Selected Money Back, which will feature Saratoga. For the majority of the weekend, they've got a great racing cards uh, today, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I believe Sunday we're going to move to Del Mar for the, for the uh, Summer Selected Money Back because the weather certainly does look better there than it does at Saratoga. But we also have a lot of great stuff this weekend. Woodbine, there's a 15% odds boost uh, for the King's Plate Day, uh, which is a tremendous card. Uh, we also have uh, the Del Mar Daily Double Down continuing, 25% bo uh, bonus or a boost on those Daily Doubles as well. And Colonial Downs has their uh, hit it and split it for their uh, pick five, their late pick five on Friday. I mean, I could talk about our promos all day. We've got about 15 of them up there, but be sure to go to the offers page and uh, log in. But uh, again, you're getting a look at that 15% profit boost on King's Plate Day, which is uh, a tremendous card. And we got a lot. We've got the profit boost and we have the $200 cash tournament. So a lot to be excited about uh, for a great day of racing up at Woodbine. Well, uh, now time to get into our what else. And uh, Brownie, considering you have the best view of us, we'll give you uh, dibs on talking about what else you're looking at this weekend. Yeah, and I'm coming back to here, DZ, uh, Del Mar on Saturday. There's a uh, five and a half furlong Maiden for two-year-olds over the main track, and, and Bob Baffert has a couple of unraced uh, colts that look very interesting. Uh, Kalia Bay, a $700,000 son of Authentic, and Citizen Bull, another product of the Keeneland September sale. Uh, this one, an Inter Mischief, who I think also cost around that $650,000, $700,000 mark. And uh, I actually just spoke to Bob uh, in an interview for Twin Spires. He's quite high on, on both of these colts. Uh, he says that uh, Kalia Bay uh, looks the most like his dad out of any of the other authentics that have uh, passed through his barn uh, over the last couple of years. And uh, yeah, it seems they're quite excited about these two unraced colts. 
heading into Saturday. And of course, he's just been doing so well with his two-year-olds, right? Um, we saw Getaway Car win uh, last Saturday, Noonie the, the weekend before that. And uh, he's got plenty of others uh, in his barn at the moment. So as always, looks like Bob's just got a, a fantastic crop of two-year-olds as we get excited for um, the three-year-old season already. I know it's a, a, only August, but you're always looking forward to next year, right? Oh, yeah, especially at Twin Spires when we have the road to the Kentucky Derby. So definitely a lot to look forward to as we uh, flip the calendar into the three-year-old season. Nick, we're going to flip on over to you. What do you else you want to talk about for this weekend? Yeah, maybe some would view it as a little mundane, but a one other than allowance uh, early on the Saturday Saratoga card, it goes as race three. So this is the return of a filly named Bandita, a daughter of Gunrunner, who was a really impressive debut winner at Gulfstream all the way back in January of 2023. So she's been off for about 19 months since then. Comes back in a in a spot where she's in she's in tough. It's she's a six to five. She's actually one of my possible fades. She's facing a filly named Nick Style, who uh, as much as I want to land there, of course, for the that big angle. Uh, but now is new to the to the Bill Mod barn. Stephen Russo, who owns this owns this filly, had her with Ralph Nix. Ralph Nix recently retired. She's also coming back from a layoff. She's not exactly made of iron herself, having made only two prior starts in roughly 27 months of training. But she is really fast. So is the five girls weekend. This is a really fun matchup. And I think a situation where if you're playing that early pick five on Saturday, you might want to take a chance against Bandita, who's going to be a pretty heavy favorite in here. So she won a five horse race on debut. The other four fillies in there, three of the four of them that broke their maiden subsequently did so on turf. And the one who didn't basically only improved her speed figure by a modest amount. So I don't really think Bandita beat much. She set a slow pace that day. This is a filly that I'm willing to take on a little bit at a pretty short price on Saturday, but it's nice to have her back. Always good to see flashy uh, debut winners come back in any capacity. So I'm looking forward to that third race early on the Saratoga card on Saturday. Yeah, it's it's pretty remarkable that these two fillies that have very similar profiles as being blowout winners at Gulfstream Park, both returning off the layoff, squaring off against one another. And the track announcer in me looks at this, and if I were in the booth that day, I would say, of course, Benedetta and Bandina are lining up right next to each other, which is going to be a lot of fun <laughs> for different parts of that race. But uh, we wish uh, Frank Miramarty luck with, uh, with that, right, Nick? Let's hope their silks are very different because their names are way too similar. Yeah, exactly. Way too similar indeed. Um, I'm going to talk about you have the Lake Placid and the Del Mar Oaks on the same day and uh, the kind of the contrast of the two three year old crops on the turf. Um, look, I'm of the opinion that when it comes to turf racing and, and you referenced this earlier, Nick, uh, I, I think the East Coast turf horses are just better than the West Coast turf horses. And for the most part, um, that is something that when we get to the Breeders' Cup uh, and when these uh, in any situation where they hook up, that's typically a, a, a winning formula in playing against any of the California horses that take a lot of money. You referenced the Anna Zett earlier, who I do think is probably one of the better, if not the best California turf play that we've seen maybe in the last four or five years. Uh, and we'll see how she stacks up against the East Coast runners, potentially, and the international contingent in the Breeders' Cup. But looking at the Lake Placid uh, on Saturday, uh, you have, I, I would say, three or four of these horses that I just expect are better. Uh, than what's in the grade one of our oak. She feels pretty certainly is the, the high point of that. Uh, Proctor Street is actually a filly that I've been a fan of since her debut. She's making her third lifetime start. She has a world of upside for Brendan Walsh. Dynamite uh, Dynamic pricing, excuse me, is uh, second race back off the form cycle after being a little bit dull last time out. Beautiful Love is shipping in for Charlie Appleby. Uh, and it's just kind of interesting that you have the grade two at Saratoga, the grade one at Del Mar. And I know that uh, Brownie is a huge fan of ice cream, ice cream, and I'll certainly give him an opportunity to cut me down to size here. I just think the Lake Placid is a better race than the Del Mar Oaks is, Brownie. Yeah, I mean, look, DZ, I think I, I think both races are, are stacked, and, and I'm excited to, to, to wager on both of them on the weekend as well. And, you know, I guess we'll see on, on Saturday, you know, ice cream, ice cream is up against a, a couple of shippers, and, you mentioned Anna Set. I saw you on social during the week last week. I almost responded to you, you know, uh, your tweet about Anna Set, uh, and, and I don't know. I got distracted, um, but you know, I can talk to you about it now. I thought that's not have been that like, good of a tweet. <laughs> no, I mean, I thought Anna Set was really impressive last oh, week. Okay. It was a ha handicap conditions. She was giving um, weight, and uh, and she she won well in hand, running away. I thought, and you know, she she's a, a, a star here over on the. The um, West Coast. I was even talking to Leonard Powell uh, last week about potentially 
um, taking Anaset overseas, and he's definitely open to it. He wants a you know home game at the moment this year with the, the Del with the Breeders' Cup being at Del Mar, but. Um, you know, we could see Anaset potentially go over and take on a race in Hong Kong or something uh, in the future, which would be really exciting, flying the flag for the West Coast uh, turf horses. But yeah, look, they're both two fantastic races. I'm not going to side <laughs> over one over the other, but looking forward to um, to playing both of them on the weekend. Yeah, I've long been a fan of Anaset. I think after her maiden win, uh, I even I even tweeted about her. So I've been a, I've been a huge fan of hers for the better part of a couple of years. Um, and she certainly has the Breeders' Cup at the right location this year for her to be on top of her game. So we'll yeah. see how she stacks up. But a fascinating weekend of racing. Uh, there's also the Alabama at Saratoga, which we actually didn't even mention. Uh, Candied is the 7-5 to five favorite. Real quick, Nick, any thoughts there? She finally gets away from uh, Torpedo Anna. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't know about you. I actually kind of hoped Candied was going to run a little better last time out. Yeah. I, it made me wonder whether that Mammoth race was just a little overrated, being against older fillies. The fact that the runner-up had come back and won her next start so impressively, Honor D. Lady, made me feel like it was maybe a better race than it was. I think this is a lot more wide open than her 7-5 of five odds would indicate. So I like just basking a little bit. I might be reading too much into the, the prior mile and a quarter win, but she was very good at Prairie Meadows last time out. And obviously, she's going to have to elevate her game, but there's no worry as far as the distance goes. Um, it ends up being, which w w we expected, a far more competitive race minus Torpedo Anna, as you've got uh, you've got eight fillies in there that, other than Candied, one of them could end up being a great new Grade One winner uh, by winning the Alabama. So I'm looking forward to it, but just basking would be would be my pick as of right now. But uh, definitely going to be one to watch. Yeah, I actually almost used her as my fade uh, this week, but I actually I thought you were going to jump on her, and then you ended up jumping on the same fade that I had anyway, so I had to pivot again, which was kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, great weekend of racing. Certainly looking forward to it. Be sure to go to Twin Spires. Check out all the offers. The summer selected money back continues. It will include the aforementioned Alabama. It's one of the listed races in that offer on Saturday. And be sure to take part in the great tournaments this weekend, especially around King's Plate up at Woodbine as well. So for Brownie and Nick, thanks so much for joining us for another edition of The Jury. We'll be back once again next week to talk about more of our best bets and fades here at Twin Spires.